Hi guys, and welcome back to That Spooky Life. I am your host, Miranda, and I am glad that you are here. If you are listening to the podcast and are joining us for the first time, welcome to the spooky side. And I'm trying out something new at this episode. We'll see how it goes. If you are joining us on YouTube for the first time, I am also happy that you are here. I don't know how many of these I'm going to do, I am working through a backlog of just trying to add pictures and video to some of the old episodes so that I can also post those on YouTube, but I thought I'd give it a try filming one and see how it goes. So we'll see. (laughs) It's going to be a little odd, and I wanted to just let you know that ahead of time is that I'm going to be reading quite a few things. So I'm going to be looking down at my computer quite a lot. I'm hoping it's still entertaining, hopefully. Cross your fingers. We'll see. If it's a if it's a bust, it's a bust, then this will never see the light of day on YouTube. It may just be an interesting episode on the podcast. So let's dive right in, shall we? Today I am going to be sharing a personal story that I experienced recently. The day before, I believe, we did the investigation at the Canton Mills apartment complex where Spooky Friend Kevin lives. Astrid came down from the state of Oregon. And she brought a friend with her. And there was a day that I had a chance to sort of take them around and show them some fun stuff. So obviously, the first place I took them to was Myrtle Hill. Astrid had heard about Myrtle Hill on the podcast for one or two stories that I've shared, but definitely one. So Myrtle Hill it was. After we were there for a little while and initially climbing the hill, because I was like, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top because that's the hardest part. And then we'll work our way back down. So we went fairly straight up without being ridiculous for the most part. After a while, Astrid kept like sort of like looking behind her and trying to figure out. She seemed like she was sensing something and it honestly did feel like we were being watched. But to me, the the hill downtown is right over the river and you can see most of the downtown area from the top of the hill and the side of the hill, to be perfectly honest, because it's pretty tall. So feeling watched is not necessarily unheard of. There's also a lot of awareness there from other spirits and guardians and things like that. I looked around, but I didn't see anything early on. There was a slight unease, but I had a hard time discerning if it was ambient or if it was just like our unease at having noticed something notice us, if that makes sense. We get to the top, we're looking around, taking pictures of some of the beautiful angels. I took them to some of my favorite, you know, tombs and angel statues and things like that. Gave them what history I knew. And there's a Civil War section on the other side from where we started. We decided to go there so I could show them because it's always been very energetically loud. It's not like, it's near the street, but it's not like street loud. It's like you walk up to it and the hair on your arm stands up and you can tell that there's disquieted souls in this area which makes sense for a lot of the civil war stuff because people died far from home and couldn't be sent home necessarily or were unrecognizable and there was no way to send them to their families and so if you sit up a ghost and you're like i have no idea where i am i have no idea where how to get back to my family am i dead like don't even realize you're dead that can cause disquiet it's not unheard of and it's not uncommon specifically down here And it's odd because the way that that goes for me is it kind of gives me like a stomach turny feeling. But Astrid's friend, Amara, was getting lightheaded and we had noticed that it was very palpable at that time. And then as we're standing there or as we're making our way over there, there was a gentleman who stopped and asked us for directions, asked us if we were from around there. He was very clearly visiting. We ran into a Karen, apparently, because then a woman pulled up behind him randomly, like the only two other people, only two other vehicles in the graveyard, and they happened to be right there. And then she was just like, excuse me, can you go forward so I can get around? Regardless, we were polite to both of them. And then I noticed that Astrid was not standing with us. She had gone across the street and I'd seen her taking a picture. So I was like, oh, okay, she saw something she wanted to take a picture of. But then after a moment, she'd not returned. And I saw we were... We were just waiting at the Civil War section. Finally, she started to come up and the movement caught my eye. And I looked over and I saw something hop from behind Astrid to behind a tree. And it was not something physical, but I did oddly see it with my, not physical eyes. I was like, what was that? 
after the other people left and Astrid makes her way to us, she was like, I wanted to step away for a second to see if I could discern what I was feeling. And it was sort of poking at me. And I was like, yep, sure was. I saw it hop from behind you to behind that juniper tree over there. She was like, what? I was like, yes, from all the way over here. I saw it with my physical eyes, which doesn't happen terribly often. Usually it's impressions. Usually it's like mind's eye, things like that. Not this one. Not this one. Nope, that was, I saw physical movement with my physical eyes. It was an interesting experience, but it didn't feel malicious or evil or like even like it intended any kind of like harm or anything. It just seemed curious, mischievous at best. So I attempted to send my senses towards it and it just kept going further away. But I've had run-ins there before. I think it was a guardian personally, because there's a lot of things that have happened at Myrtle Hill. And for those who may not know, the empathy, clairsentience, clairvoyance, things like that, sensitive abilities in general can at times be thrown off by the living themselves. I personally have a really hard time when I walk into a space initially trying to be like, all right, I sense all of these things. And then I have to go through and parse out this living. Is this residual? Is this the dead? Like what's going on here? Living things have energy as well. And when you are just sensitive to energy, then you have to figure out the source. But it also literally depends on the person and the situation. So it's different for everybody, just like most things in life. So at the same time that Astrid was parsing her senses, I saw it behind her. I have asked if she would be willing to write up her experiences and send it into the podcast. And she has said that she would as soon as life calms down for her. She's got some crazy stuff going on right now with just work and scheduling and things like that. So stay tuned for that. We continued our tour around. I told them all of the history stuff that I knew and my personal experiences to go with it like the spirit of sorrow that I had run into that followed me home one day and I learned my lesson. Since that incident, some eh, 13 years ago or so, it's it's been a while, but since that incident, I have always been very careful. I am familiar with things lurking and following from Myrtle Hill, and I'm not the only one. I know other people who have had experiences as well there. It's very rarely a dead spirit that does things at Myrtle Hill. It's usually one of the probably was never human style guardian spirits of the hill and the area and the land like Rome's called the Enchanted Land and there's a reason. I've personally never run into a ghost there. Just some echoes that might have once been people. Well, whatever's going on with the Civil War section. I've never seen a specific ghost there but there is definitely some bad vibes that may manifest itself at times as ghosts and I was just usually there during the day. But as far as like other mischievous things that are out and about, I would advise folks to be careful. And one way of doing that is something that we agreed was probably a good idea. Astrid and I were on the same page that we were going to find a proper exit, which was a gate over a drive, and that we were going to walk out backwards. And we were going to walk out backwards because it is part superstition, part old wives tale, but like those things have magic behind them because they have been utilized for so many years. If you walk out backwards, you are casting your gaze behind you, as it were, so that nothing can follow you out because it's one of those things like against the evil eye. If you're watching it, it can't follow you. I will look up the origin of where that came from, but it was almost like there wasn't even a question. We were just like, yeah, no, that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, That way, things don't follow us because there had been something following us the whole time. After that, we did not have any issues. We were not followed. And many of the beautiful graveyard pictures that I have shared on my Instagram were taken either by myself or by Astrid, who is a phenomenal photographer. So if you haven't seen those, feel free to go check them out. Myrtle Hill is a beautiful place and still to this day, one of my favorite places in the Northwest Georgia area. All in all, it was a beautiful day with good friends and good company in a beautiful, if spooky, place. We got followed a little bit by something, but it stayed there and all was well. And that is my spooky story for the week. Which brings us to our listener story for the week, which comes from friend of the podcast, 13. You guys may be familiar with some of 13's stories, such as our first EVP that was ever shared on the podcast. 
It is episode 42 with the Queen Mary. It is an excellent story, and I was super excited. So the name of 13's story is False Footfalls. And 13 writes, The other night, as cold air sank into Michigan, the dirt roads of the forested rural area I reside in felt alive with activity, something that I find strange as my own energy ebbs in the cold. Shadows played amongst the bare trees, things that could be written off if it was not for the fact that I have walked these roads for the last six months during all different times of day in a large variety of weather, and these felt more like the entities I had experienced in the summer when the brush was thick and barely passable. Those, though, are not what made me note the walk. Okay. From the end of my road, I began to hear footsteps behind me that were noticeably out of sync with my own. One step of mind and a few steps would follow me as if, whatever it was, was trying to hang back when I paid attention to it. When the footfalls were the loudest, a rolling sense of panic crashed against my shields and dissipated. At the mile and a half mark, I turn around at the edge of the hidden treasury property, a home that once was raided by the FBI because the owner was embezzling and buried several tubes of items and cash on the 16 acres. I would like to go there with a shovel. It has been several years since the original owner and two years since the house mysteriously, caught fire, destroying the roof on a very beautifully designed home. It is this property that I sensed an aggressive spirit on over the summer. It did not like me being near its property at a very specific time of day, but it never passed the privacy wall of cypress trees. I thought briefly, maybe it was this spirit following me on the walk as someone had recently started construction to repair or rebuild the house. But instead of stopping there and turning around, I continued down a smaller dirt road away from the house and nothing. The footsteps stopped. The dull pound of it trying to get me to panic stopped. Whatever followed me did not trend the new addition to my path, which I found out was someone's driveway. I walked until I saw the person's house just over the crest of the hill and I turned around, back to my path, back to my road, a few feet back to normal, and the unusual footsteps began again. The feeling began again. It followed me back to a few houses down from my girlfriend's house and then stopped once more. It was all very strange. I couldn't get a sense about what it was. It seemed to dodge my perceptions in that manner. And the next night, when I walked, it never reappeared. Oh, wow. So I'm going to be honest. I've read this story before. We had the House Kepru mini gather in December. And this story, 13, was generous enough to let me share on our little live shenanigans there. So some of you may have heard this. Some of you may have not. But it is picturing it in my head gives me such chills. That is, first of all, 13 thank you for sharing this story. You know, I love your writing style. You are such a solid author when it comes to your personal experiences. And it was very clear in my head. Like I, it was like I was walking with you, which is bananas, bananas. And I'm, I, I am not inclined to walk down that road. I am inclined to know what happened, but I'm not inclined to walk down that road. 13. Thank you very much for sharing your story. You know, I love reading your stuff. This is a great one. If terrifying at the time, I'm sure, but thank you for sharing it. And I look forward to any more stories that you'd like to share with us and the podcast. That is our listener story for the week, which brings us to something new that we're doing on the podcast. We've always done witchy tips and I've sort of, you know, come up with what they're going to be off the cuff. But a few episodes ago, I decided that for 2021, that we were going to try and structure the witchy tips a little bit. Because when I'm just sort of coming up with them off the cuff, you know, you'll get a stone explanation and then like some advice a couple episodes in a row, then maybe a tarot draw and it's all over the place. And I've had a couple of people, as I mentioned before, request more stone information, request more tarot, request more advice. And then I figured we can start alternating and going through them. But there's one that I am adding as a new addition. The contemplation cards that were made by 
Cat Rogers and Michelle Belanger. I will put a link in the description if you guys would like to buy a set. I have found them very useful. They are usually used for shadow work things. Like they'll give you a word and then you journal on that word or you, you know, meditate on that word. I leave it out where I can see it all day for whatever day or two that I, I have the card up for. Anytime I see it, I think about it and I, I internalize it and be like, what does this word mean to me? What does this word mean in my life right now? Things like that. So, you know, you can, you can write it down. You can journal about it. You can take the word and meditate on it. Whatever you guys, whatever works for you personally. I have it here on my little pin board where I, if I sit down to work, I will see it. That will be in my mind every day for as long as one particular card's up. It is now in the rotation. And much like we do three card tarot spread to see how the week or the month is going to go, I figured we could draw a card and think about it until next week kind of thing. So I drew a card earlier. And the card that I have for this week is creativity. Now, sure, you could argue, oh, I'm sitting here creating content. I'm being creative. But like, where else could I be creative? What is creativity to me? What makes me feel creative? What makes you feel creative? What inspires and ignites that creative passion in you? You know, not everybody's an artist, not everybody's a content creator, not everybody's comfortable on microphone or camera or comfortable with a paintbrush in their hand and not everybody has an iPad, you know, things like that. Creativity is not just the fine arts. It's not just painting. It's not just poetry. It's not just writing. Anything can be creative. What it means to you personally that makes it important makes it useful to meditate on these things. You know, if you're like, well, I'm not creative. Well, I'm sure there's something in your life that you're creative about. Sit down and think about it. What do you do that no one else does? Sure, you could argue the the whole, oh, well, nothing's new. Well, yes, but there is only one you. So there's got to be something different, something creative that you do that no one else does. Not in the way that you do it, at least. And if there's not, is it something that you want in your life? What what does creativity look like to you? I feel you. I feel you all going, no, 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 I'm not creative. You're wrong. I, that's not me. That's not who I am. Okay, fine. I accept different strokes for different folks. I accept the idea that maybe some out there are not creative. I believe that everybody has the potential to be creative. It's just a matter of finding that thing that makes you want to be creative. But if you're one of the people who believes fully that they are not creative, what does creativity look like to you? What makes you go, oh, that person's very creative? What are the things that inspire you to appreciate creativity? What things that are creative are you inspired by? If you're not creative, you can still appreciate, you know, art or a painting or a book or a poem. What creative things make you feel good, inspire you? That's just a couple of ways. I'm sure you guys will come up with a couple of more that you could, you know, think on. Creativity is our contemplation card for the week. And that is the end of our witchy tip. So you guys know the drill. If you have a story that you would like to share with the podcast, please send it to that spooky life podcast at gmail.com. I have an Instagram at that spooky life podcast. I've started sharing some funny things and like spooky things and spooky stories on TikTok at vampire aunt spooky. If you would like to check that out, if you're a TikToker, I don't post regularly, so you're not missing a whole lot if you're not a TikToker. If you have someone that you would like me to interview on the show, let me know. If you have a subject or a story that you would like to hear about that is spooky, let me know. And you guys know that I always love getting your stories and reading them. I will never get tired of it. You guys spook me out way more than anything has happened to me in my life. And it is part of the fun of it and part of normalizing the conversations and sharing this stuff with you guys. So that is all for this week, my dearest, darling, and spookiest friends. Don't forget to keep living that spooky life. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.